But I have been having a splendid May already. It's been a mega May. And the Lord prophesied and say May will be a month of mega miracles. Mega miracles, mega harvest, mega promises fulfilled. And you can watch the prophetic word of the month that I released uh, literally three weeks ago already. And of course, if you watch in that broadcast, I prophesied as well about praying for Israel, right? I prophesied about uh, Asia and China and Russia and Europe and Israel. And uh, of course, uh, I just realized that there were some bombings earlier this week uh, or even last week uh, from uh, the Gaza Strip with the terrorist groups of Hamas into Israel. But let me tell you, these are the days where we're going to see uh, an invasion of the enemy. But the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against them. So we're living in a day right now where we're seeing an invasion of the enemy. Someone say invasion. An invasion of terrorism, an invasion of demonic activity, of deception, of heresy, of lies, an invasion of false prophets. So we're living in a day where we're seeing an invasion we even see in the southern border in California and in Texas. Arizona, it is horrible in the United States. We're seeing an invasion right now. And these are all the plots and plans of the globalists and elitists, of course. However, the Lord has a plan. The devil has a plot, but Jesus has a plan. And we understand that even when uh, the enemy comes in like a flood, that God will raise up a standard against him. All right, if you're talking, if you're hearing me today, I want you to say amen. Now give us some hearts and likes. Let's build up the room and the algorithm because I'm going to begin to prophesy over you that blessings and suddenlies are chasing you down because the Lord said in this month of May, it will be a month of mega, same mega, mega harvest, mega breakthrough, mega blessing. Now, of course, we are still in the countdown of the Omer or the counting of the Omer. We're literally about two weeks away from Pentecost Shavuot Sunday. And of course, Pentecost stands for harvest. Listen, I want to talk to you. We're two weeks away from building or sowing, investing. We're two weeks away from when the due date or the expiration date is about to come, where God is going to close the door. God is going to close the cap, where the limited number is going to come to a completion. And remember, there were 500. But eventually, after a period of 10 days, there was 120 in the upper room. Someone said, amen. Why am I sharing this? Because God is shedding the fat. God is cutting the fat. The Lord is beginning to remove the excess, the extra baggage, the extra weight. The Lord is beginning to cut down and make it lean and mean and green. Can I get an amen? And the Lord is beginning to head about cut some things down in your life because he's getting ready for an explosive summer season. Some would say summer of miracles. I believe June, July, and August. We're going to step into a three-month window of mega miracles. And I want to talk to you because I believe, my friends, okay, from now all the way, I've been saying this. If you've been following me, you know what I'm talking about. But from now all the way to, uh, to Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the 10 days of all. But how about this? In the next six months, in the next six months, we're going to begin to see a lot of shaking. From now to November. Amen. From now to the election run in the United States. Now, I want to talk to you, friends, because we are in a critical season. And probably in about two to three weeks, I'm going to do an exclusive prophetic broadcast, an exclusive prophetic live. Because even today, the Lord began downloading to me certain things, horrific, evil things that the enemy is plotting and that's going to take place in America and in the nation of the world in the next six, seven months, all the way up to the elections, the beginning of the election, election race in the month of November. Amen. But today I want to talk about suddenlies and blessings chasing you down. Because I believe we're living in a dichotomy. We're continuously living in a paradox. Uh, a dualistic sword. A, a double-edged sword. Where it's both dark but it's light. It's difficult but it's glorious. It's 
It's, it's bitter, but it's sweet. And we're living in this dichotomy. But I want to prophesy to you because we're two weeks away. So I'm say two weeks to Pentecost. We're two weeks away until the door is closed, until the expiration date comes, and boom, you're shedding, you're getting lean, mean, and green. Doors are closing, so new doors can open. Amen, are you hearing me today? Doors are closing, Rebe, so that new doors can open, and the Lord is beginning to prepare a way for you. God is beginning to prepare tables for you, rooms for you, and I don't know about you, uh, but I'm just focused, okay? And I want to encourage you right now because we're in a season where there's so much demonic distraction. There's so much demonic distraction nonsense, warfare, where the enemy is trying to sabotage your destiny. The devil is trying to derail your future, amen? But let me tell you, in the next two, three weeks, everything in your life is going to change. If you're with me today, say amen. I want you to say Preach, Dr. Ben, because prophetically, we are in a two, three week window. And after Pentecost, there's going to be the 120 that's filled and baptized with the power of God, a new dimension of glory, a new level of the power, a new level of the anointing. The Lord is beginning to shut doors, amen, close and plug up some wells. Maybe some streams of income, some wells of, of water, some revival wells. Things are shutting and closing so that the Lord can begin to open something new for your life. If you're following me today, say amen. And if you're with me, I want you to say preach Dr. Ben because in the next two, three weeks, everything in your life is about to shift and change. And if you receive it, and if you follow me today, I want to say amen, give us some hearts and likes in the name of Jesus. But there's warfare. There's a nonsense, there's distraction, there's division, there's chaos. However, as we know, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. And I want to say, I am the standard. I want you to comment, I am the standard. Because there's a new standard. There's a new level. There's a new anointing. There's a new realm of the fire, the power, the glory of God. There's a new level, a new standard that the Lord is raising you up into. Someone say amen. And in this season, God is calling you higher. He's saying, do not battle with the enemy, with these people in the second heavens. All right. Do not give your ear to gossip, to slander, to drama. In fact, even now, we shut the door to demonic distractions and to demonic drama. The devil is trying to pull you in into nonsense. But this is a season to be focused. This is a time where you're focused eye on the prize, where you're going to press in. You're going to yield into the Holy Ghost. Why? Because Jesus paid the price. He laid down his life. He poured out his spirit. You don't need a man, a woman, a ministry, a minister. You don't need anybody. Come on, somebody. And Jesus is saying, whose side do you want? Are you on the side of the Lord? So there's a line being drawn in the sand, a demarcation. And once again, there is a separation taking place, shaking and separation, shaking and separation. If you're with me today, I want you to say amen. Shaking and separation. So in the next two to three weeks, everything is going to begin to change. But in midst of the waters rising, the tumultuous storms of the day, keep your eyes on Jesus. Remember, Peter walked out of the boat. He began to walk on water. But when he gave his attention to the storm, to the shaking, that's where he began to sink. And Jesus said, come to me. Peter, come to me. There's a new call. There's a new calling. So I believe in this season, God is calling us higher. The Lord is calling you higher. Can I get an amen? And listen, I want to talk to you because even in midst of the separation and the shaking and the nonsense and the warfare and the distractions and the doors being closed and Jesus cleaning the house, that's what's happening. God is cleaning house. Some would say, Jesus is my house cleaner. Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the Ruach Kodesh, the Spirit of Santo, He's cleaning a house. Amen. So things are being cleansed. There's a cleansing taking place. An extraction. Rekete, a slimming down. A cutting down from 500 to 120 in the upper room. So I don't know about you, 
but I am even more focused, more joyful, more determined because I set, set in my eyes upon the prize of our salvation, considering it full joy, enduring the cross, amen, because there's great rewards ahead. Now, I wanna to talk to you today. I wanna to give you the bulk, the main thing of what I wanna to talk to you. All of that was just a buildup and an introduction for what I wanna release in your spirit today. If you're with me today, I want to say amen and give it some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall and tag somebody because I believe there is an allotment coming to you. What does that mean? The Lord is searching across the earth to and fro and he's looking for the ones who will stand tall, stand true with him and for him. And he is beginning to allot inheritances. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, I want you to pray out loud in the spirit of God because I feel a release coming right now. And the Lord is saying, he's beginning to give you the spoils of the strong. I hear God saying, he's beginning to give you the inheritance of the wicked, the wealth of the wicked. God is moving things around so he could bless you, so that it could come into your bosom, into your lap, into your basket, into your account. And the Lord is moving things around so that there will be new blessings new flow, new grace, new mantles, new anointings, new glories, but the Lord is shifting, shaking, separating things around so that he can allot them to you, to your family, to your ministry, in the name of Jesus and all of God's people say amen. And I'm sharing this because even in midst of the distractions and the dramas and the divisions and the deceptions, the spirit, shoo, the Spirit of God is saying, get ready for the outpouring of God. The Holy Ghost is saying, get ready for the floodgates to open. Now, he, she, who has ears to hear and eyes to see. If you're with me today, I want to say amen. Because God is beginning to bless his chosen servants abundantly, ridiculously, scandalously, like never before. Amen. It's the transference of the wealth of the wicked to you and to your bosom. If you're with me today, I want to say amen. So the key verse for today, amen. The key verse for today, hallelujah. Let's go over to Psalm 23, verse six. Psalm 23, verse six. Now, if you're with me today, I want to say amen. Rebe said once again, I'm here in Korea. And uh, we had a phenomenal uh, four days in Palmyra region, Pennsylvania. Incredible, powerful. Love what God's doing in that glory hub in that region. Amen. Good to see you, Becky. But here, Psalm 23, verse 6. And I wrote it out here. I got two translations. Here in the ESV, which I typically read out of my main uh, translation. I, I read, And of course, I study all the other translations and the lexicon and the interlinear and the commentaries, the Greek and the Hebrew, etc., etc. But here in the ESV, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Amen. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to repeat that. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Let's read in the NLT. Surely your goodness and your unfailing love will pursue me. Come on. The glory of God is pursuing you. It's following you, okay? The glory is pursuing you like a predator and a prey. God is pursuing you like a man that's after a woman. Can I take it a little bit deeper here? God is pursuing you like a husband pursues a wife, a spouse. Your goodness and a failing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I have to clap with this one. Can I get an amen? Because in midst of the warfare, the dramas and the traumas, the distractions, the nonsense, the second heaven warfare, there's goodness, mercy, suddenness, blessings, following you, pursuing you, hunting you, chasing you down. Listen, I need you to clap your hands and praise the name of Jesus for the next 10 seconds. Hallelujah. Because there are blessings that are chasing after you. 
There are there are multiple miracles. There's miracles, open doors, opportunities. Come on. The grace of God is pursuing you. The glory of God is chasing you down. Hallelujah. His mercy is chasing you down. You know what? I want to propose this to you. God is actively looking for ways to bless his people. Jesus is actively looking for ways to bless you. Amen. However, you and I need to catch it. We need to be aware with it. We need to acknowledge it. We need to come into alignment with him and with heaven. We need to receive it. Amen. The Lord is actively, come on somebody, looking to bless somebody. God is such a giver. God is so generous. God is such a great father. God is such a good giver. The Lord is not a stingy giver. He is a cheerful giver. Come on, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Jesus is so generous, so awesome. He, he is so gracious. God is, is such a giver that he's looking for people to receive his blessing. He's looking for people. And I'm telling you, not the leftovers, not the crumbs for dogs, but he's looking to bless you with the best of the best, the creme de la creme, the top of the top. He's looking to bless you, not with the leftovers, not with the worst fruits, but with the first fruits, not with the last, but with the first. So he is actively looking to bless you. Now, I want us to dial into this because the Bible says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me. I want you to look back. I want you to look back right now. I'm telling you, friends, the Lord is tailgating you. Jesus is bumper sticking you. Jesus is tailgating you. Jesus, he, he's your rear guard. That's what it means when the Bible says the glory of the Lord is our rear guard. Someone say, Jesus is my rear guard. Come on, somebody. Does that, do you know what that means? That means you're covered. That means your behind is covered. That means your hiney is covered. Amen. You're covered. Your, your, your backside, your rear guard is covered. Amen. Now, do you know there's a lot of people who stab you in the back? There are Judases, okay? And in every season, there's a Jezebel and there's a Judas. Amen. Every season, there's a Jezebel and a Judas. And as of now, I'm not speaking indirectly at anybody on this broadcast. So please, don't think so highly of yourself because I'm not talking about anybody right now, personally in my own life. But this is just a principle that I've learned in 15 years of ministry. Every season, there's a Jezebel and there's a Judas. However, there also is a Barnabas and there also is a Jonathan. Someone say, preach, Dr. Ben. And every season, there's a Judas and a Jezebel, all right? A backstabber. And probably you've experienced where someone took advantage of you. While you were so busy advancing and going forward, busy throughout your day, listen, you might be busy at work, you might be busy at office, and then your wife or your husband is at home, all right, and somebody just creeps and crawls in, is a creeper, all right, is a Jewel, Joe Biden creeper, and someone just creeps in, and boom, right? So Jesus says, I'm your rear guard. The Lord is your rear guard. Someone say amen, which means Jesus preaches, uh, protects your backside. He's not going to stab you in the back. He's not advantageous. God is not an opportunist. And here's the thing, my friends. I want to talk to you. I want to preach right now. There are way too many opportunists that will stab people in the back to get their contacts, their connections, their networks, their measly little offerings. There are way too many opportunists that are always looking for the next thing that they're willing to slime ball or to black ball or to put someone as a black sheep. There are way too many people who are opportunists and are backstabbers. Amen. They're like black widows. They'll, they'll toss you in. They'll trade you in. They'll trample, they'll fold to the mob. Amen. But these are the days where God is saying, if you look back, come on somebody. If you look back, you will see that the Lord is behind you and he's in front of you. He's by your side. He's all around you. But if you look back, all you're going to see is blessings, mercies, graces, love, peace. That's following you. That's pursuing you. If you're with me today, someone say amen. Now, why am I sharing this? Because I want to encourage you prophetically. 
I want to prophetically encourage you because I know there's many things that's stirring in the pot. <clears throat> Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And whatever remains is from the unshakable kingdom of God. So in midst of a season of shaking and separation and stirring, and let me tell you, friends, all of that is only going to increase. It's only going to increase. But it's for the greater good. It's for the glory of God. It's for your blessing. It's for your promotion. It's for your breakthrough. If you're with me today, say amen. So <clears throat> the reason why I felt the Lord entice me, prompt me, lead me to share this word with you from Korea, live from Korea, is because whatever the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it for good. And even in the midst of all the shaking, you know what? Do not be afraid. You, listen, the Bible says, when you are at peace with God, then he will give you peace with your enemies. When you so please the Lord, you will be at peace with all your enemies. There's no fear, nothing to be afraid of, nothing to worry about, nothing to stress over. God has got you covered. Jesus and his blood has got you covered. He's got your rear guard covered. You're covered. The front side, the bank side, every side, everywhere, at all times, in the middle of the hour, in the early morning of the day, whatever time, afternoon, come on, in your coming, in your going, in your morning, in your evening, you're covered in Jesus' name. And you know what? I don't know about you, but I'm surrounded by angels. I'm surrounded by by the presence, by the glory of God. I'm surrounded by the blessings of my heavenly father. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to give ear. I'm not going to be distracted by distractions, by demonizations. I'm not going to be distracted by, all listen, I got my head in the glory. My face is down below and I'm focused and I'm pressing through. And once again, the next two, three weeks, everything's going to change. The next two, three weeks, everything's going to change. Went from 500 to 120 in the upper room. Glory be to God. Some will say, let it go. Listen, some of you just got to let it go. Some of you just got to let it go. Some of you just got to release. You got to make room, make moves right now. Make room for change. Begin to make room for change. Because suddenlies are coming. Blessings are coming. And I want to prophesy to you. That suddenlies and blessings are chasing you down. Literally, it's like a man who's running up to you saying, Sir, Madam, take this blessing. Take this check. Take this miracle. Please, literally begging you, please take this, receive this gift from our people. If you're with me today, say amen. Let's go to another verse here. Now, this is going to be a jam-packed. Verse, literally, it's 14 verses. Literally, it's 14 verses. But I'm going to just highlight and pin the main verse I want to highlight here. Deuteronomy 28, verse 2. Of course, the chapter of Deuteronomy 28. And friends, help me to break the 150 number. The chapter of Deuteronomy 28, <clears throat> it is a conditional chapter of blessings. The conditional chapter of blessings. Amen. And here, all these blessings. Some say all. All. All these blessings shall come upon you. You. Titalalapule de Levelaga. Junior Fuentes. Edward Dawkins. Thanks for being a subscriber. You. All of these blessings. Come on. Shall come upon you. Upon you, and it will overtake you, over empower you, if someone say if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Someone say preach, talk to Ben. All of these blessings, it will overtake you. Now, have you ever swam in the in the river or the ocean, and the the raft, the waters, the waves? It's so powerful. You get overtaken. And literally, you're under the water and you're doing somersaults. You're doing rolls under the water. All right. Listen, I love swimming in Hawaii. I love swimming in beautiful waters, oceans. That's happened many times. 
Even when I've tried surfing. Amen. The waters begin to overtake you. Are you ready for the glory of God to overtake you? Are you ready for the blessings, the suddenness of heaven to overtake you? Listen, friends, I don't think you're ready for this. I don't think you're ready for this. In a day and age, in a generation where people are so drama and demon obsessed. In a day and age where people are so drama and demon obsessed. God is saying, the ones who are possessed by the love of God, by the fiery passion of first love, the ones who are so consumed with the Holy Ghost, it is those people that will be overtaken with the glory of God, where all of his blessings will come upon you. Surely goodness and mercies shall follow you, pursue you, hunt you down, chase you down, in Jesus' name. If you're ready to receive the same amen. Now, it's a conditional chapter because it's based on the big if, if you obey. So the, the, here, here's the moral of the story. Someone say, preach, talk to bed. Here's the moral of the story. In midst of the distractions, shh, the winds, the fire, the storms, uh, the rain, can you hear his voice? What is the Spirit of God saying? What is the Holy Ghost whispering? In midst of the dramas and the traumas and the demonic activity and the distractions, can you tune in? Like, of course, the olden days, the radio, the AM and the FM. Can you tune in to the right channel of the Lord Jesus Christ? where you are aligned in frequency and radio wave activity, and now you hear the clear word of the Lord instead of being distracted. And the one who tunes in, all of these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Some say amen. Now listen, 14 verses, 14 verses of specific blessings that God commands lists for his people. Someone say hallelujah. Oh, I feel like preaching today. 14 verses that the Lord specifically lists. Remember, God is not a general God. He is a specific God. He is into the specificities. He's into the intricate details, down to the hair on your chinny chin chin. He counts your hairs. He, he knows how many hairs. He knows you by name. The God who names all the stars, who is able, who has counted, who, who numbers the stars, can number the hairs on your chinny chin chin. And even, yes, you ladies, your hair on your chinny chin chin. Hallelujah. But the bearded lady. But the Lord says, if you hear my voice, if you hear, if you listen, if you obey, then blessings, mercy, goodness, glory, Opportunities, favor, some say favor, will chase you down, will hunt you down. Somebody say it's mine. Someone say, I receive it. Are you ready to receive it in Jesus' name? Now, I want to talk to you about these 14 verses of blessings. Because here, Deuteronomy 28, I'm going to just read it down the, the line. And if you're ready to receive, say amen. Give it some heart and light. Here the Bible says, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, my goodness. Like imagine the cheetah is running after the antelope and all of a sudden you see the cheetah getting closer and closer and closer and it overtakes. <laughs> the Lord is saying, my favor, my shadow, my glory, my hand of blessing is about to overtake you, overshadow you. <laughs> Amen. Now here, friends, look here. Deuteronomy 28, verse 2. All these blessings, say all. All of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God, verse 3. Blessed shall you be in the city. And blessed shall you be in the field. Amen. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb. And the fruit of your ground. And the fruit of your cattle. The increase of your herds. And the young of your flock. My goodness. I feel the Lord Jesus. Oh, Rabbi Sata, Jesus. Blessed shall be your basket 
and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in. And blessed shall, wow, shall you be when you go out. I just got a deja vu moment right now. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come against you one way and flee before you seven different ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you. Come on. God will command the blessing. Did you know the blessing is a realm, an entity? It is a living subjective object. All right, the blessing of God, all right? It's a realm, all right? If you're following me, say amen. God's blessings is a realm that can be commanded. Come on, somebody. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake. <laughs> and he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord, your God is giving you. Robosa. The Lord, come on, pray for me, people. The Lord uh, will establish you as a people holy to himself. America, Korea, as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, and all the peoples of the earth shall see that you were called by the name of the Lord, and they shall see, <laughs> and no, the Bible says, they shall be afraid of you, and the Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruits of your ground, within the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Amen. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give the rain oh, to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. I want to stretch out your hands. And I want you to say, God will bless the work of my hands. The work of your hands will be blessed. The work, the fruit of your hands, whatever you put your hands to, will be blessed. Hallelujah. Whatever your hands are put to will be blessed. The Lord will open to you as good treasure, the heavens, to give you rain. My goodness, I receive that, Lord. I receive that, Lord. I receive that, Lord. The Lord will open to you as good treasure the heavens, to give you the rain in its season to your land and to bless all the world. And you shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. <laughs> and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall only go up and not down. You shall only go up and not down. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, being careful to do them. Someone say hallelujah. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command to you today, to the right or to the left, or go after other gods to serve them. Someone shout hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands. Pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. You will be blessed in the city, in the fields, the work of your hands. You will open up. Come on, the enemy, your enemies try to come after you, try to come against you, but they will flee and scatter, be dispersed, be destroyed in seven different ways. Confusion is coming to the camp of the enemy. I prophesy the spirit of confusion is coming to the camp of your enemies. I prophesy God is beginning to scatter your enemies. In the name of Jesus, there is a scattering anointing Hallelujah. The Lord is beginning to blind your enemies so that your enemies will turn against one another and they will begin to kill and crucify one another. The Lord has said, all you have to do is be still and stand tall and stand in the glory of God. And all you have to do is worship him and praise him. Hallelujah. And as you lift up the name of Jesus, hallelujah, the Bible says there is no other name by which all souls on earth in heaven and under the earth shall be saved. The Bible says that as you lift up the name, come on, lift up your heads for the glory of God draws nigh. Your redemption draws nigh. And the Lord is saying, get ready for an outburst, an outbreak, an 
overtaking of the glory of God. Some of shout hallelujah. Of the glory of God. You got me shouting in this Korean condo. You will look back and see that you will be covered. Your steps will be covered. You will be covered in these end times, in the days of famine, in the days of shaking, in the days of so much testing. You will be covered if you obey the voice of the Lord. If you follow the word of the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and give the name of Jesus a mighty praise and a mighty shout. Come on, give us some hearts and likes for the next 10 seconds because it's coming. Blessed are you. Blessed you will be. Blessed will be the work of your hands, your basket, your bowl. Glory be to God. Blessed are you when you're coming and you're going. Blessed are you. Someone say, I'm blessed. Someone say, I'm blessed. Listen, in a day and age where there's going to be decrease, there's going to be famine, there's going to be recession, another great depression, war, rumors of war, you will be blessed. Hallelujah. I will rather believe the reports of Jesus than believe in the reports of these nonsense heretic hunters, these loony uh, Facebook gumby, gummy bear worms i'd rather believe in the report of the lord than listen to fake news false news drama news high school drama news i'd rather listen to the report of the lord so much hallelujah listen for his voice listen to his word what does he say what does the lord say hallelujah and i prophesy that the wealth of the wicked is coming to you. Their bread will become your bread. Their vineyards will become your vineyards. Their houses, their store, everything they've done and built is coming to your bosom. Hallelujah. It's undeniable. It's unmistakable. It's you. It's you. Amen. This is a season. Come on, pray Allah. Hallelujah. This land, Korea. Belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. And I declare and I decree a mighty mega wave of revival in this nation of South Korea that it will even hit the nation of North Korea. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. You will not have to fear the terror by night nor the terror by day. Jesus, so as they preach, talk to men. Listen, I want to read this over you. My goodness. Thank you, Lord, my God. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Come on, friends. Help me to break the 170 today. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He's my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler snare, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your sheared and your rear guard. You will not fear the terror of night. Come on, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. It will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Hallelujah. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. I love that same word in the English, overtake. Over, no harm. Well, you know, you know what's going to overtake you? His blessings. His blessings will overtake you if you're in the glory realm, if you're in his presence, if you're not distracted by the voice of false shepherds and false prophets and wolves and sheep's clothing. But if you are heeding the voice of the Lord, then his blessings will overtake you. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands 
so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. If you receive it, say amen. If you receive it, say hallelujah, lift up your hands. Lord, I thank you. Touch your people from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I pray for mega breakthrough, mega blessings, mega harvest, mega glory. That your presence, your joy, come on, joy, 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 joy. Your joy, your glory, your beauty. Will overtake you. Overtake your people, oh God. Marababosa Tarabrata. Samasha Hallelujah. Rusata. Lift up your hands. Lord, I thank you for the overtaking anointing. The overtaking anointing. The Lord, He will overtake like, like the river that spills and overflows from the brim. My cup overflows. He anoints my head with oil on my cup of flows. Friends, don't be distracted only to the left or the right. Don't get dragged in, caught up in demonic warfare dramas of high school girls. The Lord is cleaning house. There's a house cleaning anointing coming. And he's getting you ready for the Pentecost harvest boom, for the glory launch. He's getting you ready for when the fire, the power, the glory of God, the promise of the Father comes upon the selected few. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of that 120. My goodness, someone say, preach Dr. Ben. I want to be a part of that chosen 120. Now, let me say this. Did God pre-elect the 120 in the upper room? I believe not. I don't believe God predestined, pre-elected, pre-selected before the foundation of the Lord. I don't believe God pre-elected 120. Only certain people to be a part of the 120. I believe it was based on their hunger. It was based on their obedience. So are you going to tell me God pre-selected, predetermined that Certain 380 people are not going to get blessed. They're going to be in the flesh and miss out on what God had for them. Are you going to tell me? No. But it was based on their hunger. It was based on their attitude, their focus. And I want to talk to you. Be focused. Don't be distracted right now. Be focused. I feel like tomorrow I want to do another broadcast on destroying demonic strongholds and distractions. Destroying demonic distractions and strongholds. I'll probably do that tomorrow, probably around the same time. But I want to encourage you today. Because when you look back, all you will see is goodness and mercy. Do you know why? Because you're in the will of the Lord. And of course, when you're in God's will, it doesn't mean there's not going to be hardships and persecution and difficulty. And No, no, not at all. But when you're in the will of the Lord, it means you're overflowing in the glory. It means that his blessings are overtaking you. What's that? Who's that chasing you? Who's that following you? That's not a monitoring spirit. It's not a Russian spy. Do you know? That's the Holy Ghost. That's the blessing, the glory of God. That's the power of Jesus that follows me wherever I go. Someone say amen. If you're with me today, say amen. Friends, I believe in this season, God is saying, stay focused. Be a part of the 120. Press in, yield. Don't give the devil any ground. <clears throat> Don't give the enemy any ground. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Listen, I want to pray for some of you. I want to pray for some of you. If you want me to pray for you, come and pray for me. Amen. 
But if this broadcast blessed you today, I want you to share this on your wall. Consider giving this page a like, a follow. We're almost at a 200,000 follows on Facebook. So praise God. Thank you and God bless you. But uh, I want you, I want you to share this on your wall. Amen. I'm telling you, friends, we got mega harvest coming. June, I'm here in Korea. My, listen, I'm too grown, okay? I'm too grown. There's too much to do for the Lord. I ain't got time for pettiness. I ain't got time to defend myself, to prove myself, to kiss no one's booty. I ain't got time to get caught up in little sissy stuff. I got too much to do for Jesus. There's too many souls to save, too many devils to cast out, too many nations that are out of balance. And are you, are you kidding me? You're, you're, you're gonna tell me that these people are gonna try to be like, pfft, hilarious. You know what I'm saying? But I wanna pray for you. I'm gonna pray for some people here. But I also want you to pray for me as I'm here in Korea. Pray for strength, amen. I believe we're gonna see a mega, mega, I'm telling you this, this is gonna be a ground shaking time here in Korea because everything we do now, it is history making. It's history making. Who? Oh! So pray for me, friends. Start ministry uh, tomorrow. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Here, amen. But listen, I want to pray for you, friends. Lord, I thank you. If you want me to pray for you, come and pray for me. Lord, I thank you right now. At least the power of God. Surely blessings, goodness, and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Susie, it will follow you all the days of your life. Missy Brown will follow you all the days of your life. Lily, Lily Beth, late night. Amika, Edward Dawkins, it will follow you all the days of your life. Amen. Shabara Karabrosa, the glory of God will follow you all the days of your life. J.C. Figueroa, J. Carlos Brody. Amen. You know, I really feel this trip in Korea. I'm going to meet with some kind of influencer. I feel that in the spirit of Pray about that. Amen. Amen, Henrietta Robinson. Do I know you, Henriette Robinson? Oh, you've, you're you part of 7 Let me pray for you, Henriette Robinson. I see a harvest coming to you. And I see like a lump sum of money. Now, I know this might sound funny to the carnal person. But I saw like a lump sum of money, like a retribution, like something that was owed to you, coming to you in abundance as a harvest, like some kind of like a insurance claim or something that somebody owes you, amen. So let it be done in Jesus' name. If that makes sense, comment below. Lord, I thank you for Annette Meras. I saw like a battle against your mind and your voice, Annette. And I heard the Lord say, keep going and be encouraged because the enemy is threatened by your voice and your presence. There's even some people that have really tried to gossip about you and accuse you and slander you on certain things and turn against you, Judas spirits, Jesus. But the Lord keeps you protected and covered. And the Holy Ghost is going to raise you up before your enemies. Amen. Bless you. Mary, let me pray for you. I haven't seen you in a while. But yeah, Mary, I see boxes being packed. And I hear the Lord saying, get ready to unpack. Wow. Just like we read in Deuteronomy 28, the storehouse of heaven. The treasure house of heaven is yours. So keep believing in that. And I believe 
by the end of the year, you're going to see a huge shift. Listen, friends, I think I shared this on my last broadcast when I was in Palmyra. But literally, I had about 70000 in loans and debt get wiped away like that. I want you to snap your fingers. Uh, I had two cars with loans of the bank wiped away like that. 70000 US dollars. So I released that to you, Mary. Rebe Sura Brata. Mara Baba Sata. Henriette Robinson. Thank you, Apostle Robert. Shut up. Thank you. Yes, I love South Africa. Chanel Jackson. I just see creativity. It's so funny, but I see like nails. And you know, like, Ladies will get their nails done. Uh, I think it's a manicure, pedicure. But I saw nails. And I don't know if you're, you're a, a saloonist or if you're in beauty, uh, hair, fashion, beauty, nails. But I just heard creativity. And I believe there's going to be business ideas and business endeavors and increase on all that you're doing, sister. So he's going to bless the work of your fingers. Jesus. Alex Namus Namasua. You hunger for the things of God. You hunger for the things of God. The Lord's going to take you deeper, Alex. He's going to open up his word to you and surprise you with re revelation. So I hear the Lord saying, don't get discouraged by what your eyes see and do not see. But be faithful. And keep loving those around you. Amen. Amen. For he's building you up. And he's training you for reigning. In Jesus name. Ramashatalalabatate. Glory to God. Annette Mara says, oh my God, you're so spot on. Amen, bless you. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, friends, lift up your hands. Listen, we're two, three weeks away from Pentecost harvest. Expect mega, mega change. Amen. Friends, I love you. Thanks for watching today. Listen, tomorrow I'm going to do a broadcast, maybe a little earlier than this time tomorrow. But I'm going to talk about destroying demonic distractions and strongholds. Bless you, love you. Thanks for watching. Share this on your wall. And I hope you were blessed. Amen. This is Dr. Pastor Benlam live from Korea. See you soon.